only mode. Hey everybody, Preston Brin here with our Trader User Group Weekly Roundup. This is for the trading week ending November 18th, 2016. So we're about halfway through, a little bit more than halfway through November. We've got a really interesting market sitting in front of us right now. As I report this uh, afternoon, uh, Saturday afternoon my time, I'm over in Europe doing a few uh, seminars and meeting with a bunch of hedge fund buddies over here just chatting away, having a good time. Enjoying what's, what we see is going to be a very interesting end of Q4 and going into 2017. It's basically going to be a Trumpflation narrative versus a deflation narrative and which one is going to drive the day. Um, it, it's going to be very interesting. Over in the United States, we see um, the Russell is on an 11-day winning streak. It's the longest since the Russell has had, I think, since uh, June, summer of two, 2003. U.S. dollar is on a 10-day winning streak, and the euro is on the longest losing streak it's had against the U.S. dollar since its inception of the euro. Um, and the 10-year um, note, 10-year uh, treasury um, notes, uh, they're up almost 40 basis points in one month. So we've got a lot of movement here in the markets. We're seeing oil coming up to a key meeting date with um, an OPEC uh, coming up the end of November, November 30th. We're seeing the oil rig count moving up, which doesn't surprise me. We moved up to almost just slightly under 600 uh, active uh, drilling rigs right now. It's a little bit more than a 5% move up with oil. Um, and we're seeing a mass amount of dollar inflows into equity ETFs, over $22 billion over the past uh, week or post-Trump uh, election here in the U.S. Um, and we've seen about 2.3% move um, of a lot of equities. We've seen XLF, a lot of money moving into the financials. We've seen an equal amount of movie, money moving into small cap. And then, by the same token, a lot of money moving out of the emerging markets. So, And with all of this activity going on, we end Q3, which I guess everybody's kind of forgotten all about the third quarter with all the activity with Trump and uh, the election results and, and where money is moving to and all the sector allocation that we're seeing. Everybody's forgotten about Q3 earnings. Q3 earnings looks like we're about done. We only have maybe a couple more percentage. Um, out of the S&P 500 uh, to, to report their earnings. But it looks like the first time in five quarters where the earnings are actually going to be positive. And um, even with that, there is a forecast for 2017 for earnings to continue to grow in Q1 or Q4 of 2016 and Q1 of 2017 on into the rest of 2017. So let's just say that the markets have gotten very interesting um, post-Trump election. I think it caught a lot of people by surprise. The markets were forecasting a 70% shot at Clinton winning. And, of course, markets uh, got it wrong. And that's why we're seeing a race, a mad dash for complete reallocation. Now, I'm over here in Europe. I'm talking to some of my buddies that run funds over here. And they're reacting as quickly as uh, funds in the U.S. are reacting. And global funds are moving money around. Uh, we're seeing this this huge, huge move. Now, understand one thing. Markets always overcorrect to the upside and to the downside. So we could get a little bit of a settling in of this initial move. And then as um, Trump finishes and rounds out who his select criteria will be to fill his cabinet and everything else, uh, and then the election, the markets are going to be watching very closely to see if he does what he says he's going to do. Um, but we've seen this allocation moving into financials, which is almost half of the market move, makes up more than half the market move to the upside. We're seeing a big move into industrials uh, across the defense sector, across potential infrastructure build out. We're seeing a big move into the material sector and then some in the uh, uh, limited moves in discretionary sector in certain areas. And then, of course, biotech is seeing its big move, too. And on top of all this, as I said, small cap and mid cap are just exploding higher. So there are a lot of opportunities in this market, folks, and, and we've got our members um, pretty much centered uh, where they need to be, certainly over the next uh, 90 days. 
what I have on the screen here. Before I get started, just as a reminder, this coming week is going to be a very short trading week. Uh, the U.S. markets are going to be closed all day on Thursday. That is uh, U.S. Thanksgiving holiday. And then Friday, the markets will be open. It's called Black Friday, which kind of kicks off the official retail buying season for the holiday season, Christmas and New, um, New Year's and going to the end of the year, which is one of the biggest times of the year if you're a retailer. And Black Friday is also a big time to uh, take a look at results for consumer spending. Now, the markets will be open a half a day on Black Friday. Uh, and most markets will be closing U.S. Uh, around 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Some of them, you know, maybe the bond market and some of the commodity markets may close at 1.30 or 2. But essentially, it's going to be a very, very slow trading day on Friday. And Thursday will be no trading day in the U.S. market. So next week is going to be a holiday-shortened week. Um, traders will probably be um, taking off uh, sometime um, in the afternoons on Wednesday, as they always do, and then just kind of call it a long weekend before we come back for the um, the final run and the final push into the Christmas and New Year's season uh, globally. So it's going to be a very, very interesting time as we round out this year. Now, what I've got on the screen here is the E-mini S&P 500 futures. You can see here, uh, looking at this chart, that this blue dashed line is the the opening price of the year. You can see on the night of the elections how price actually went below into the red and then shot back up higher. For our members uh, that were trading at this time, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we were trading and we were up until, it seems like just like the Brexit vote. I thought it would be over with early, but it wasn't. And we ran until they finally called some of the key final states and it looked like Trump was going to win. And we started taking longs in the uh, the um, Dow futures around the 17,750 area, and the Dow futures now are sitting at 18,847. So we were able to make some um, sunshine there on on that trade, much like we did on the Brexit vote. So, but as you can see, we're sitting just slightly south of the 2016 uh, highs, and it also happens to be the all-time highs. Okay. So uh, I do believe that we're going to have a little bit of difficulty getting above this colored bar here. Now, this colored bar, for those of you that, that you know, are regular watch uh, uh, or viewers of my weekly roundup, the weekly uh, updates, you know that this colored bar has been in here going all the way back to the summer months. Okay? Uh, it was my uh, resistance point based on this Elliott Wave Theory, combination of Elliott Wave Theory, a little bit of GAN, uh, uh, technology, technical base and everything. And, you know, some of you may just say, well, hey, it's just voodoo science. And <laughs> you may be right. But it tends to work out um, more than 50% of the time. So it gives us a little bit of an edge. And you can see this upsloping channel uh, that we've been running on really since the uh, February 11th lows. Now, since these February the 11th lows, I got everybody long in our group around the 12th, uh, uh, 13th of February and then we've just had a pretty good little run since then uh, and you'll notice that we moved briefly outside of the upsloping channel um, in October leading up to the election <coughs> we had this dip down and then move up and now we're right back up uh, above the upsloping channel which is the lower part of the channel of the um, uh, uh, or the lower uh, trend line of this channel here. So you can see here as I blow it up just exactly where we're sitting here like this. Okay. Uh, and I always encourage everybody, everybody, um, every time you kick off a new year, you mark the the opening price for the year, you mark the high point for the year, and you mark the low point for the year. Um, and you, you will find price action tends to act like a bug zapper around or that those key levels act like the bug zapper when price gets around it now you can also see i have in here the former all-time highs right here you can see in the green at 2134 it took us over 400 plus days to take that out you can see the blue bars on the left hand side of the chart here basically are showing um the volume over price so there is a lot of support underneath around 2134 it's where all the volume has taken place as we move up to these um, all-time highs obviously there's not as much volume but it's going to take us a lot of effort 
to um, move up above um, 21.9150. Now, if Trump comes through with what he says for this huge infrastructure spending, a half a trillion to a trillion dollars, then we're going to see the markets continue to push higher, probably um, uh, towards the upper band of our um, upslope and trend line, which can literally take us up into the middle area here around 2300, 2350. Um, and believe me, folks, we can get there. Um, it's going to be, it's going to take that infrastructure spending. And what I've talked to some of my friends, uh, it's going to be a different kind of um, infrastructure spending than what was under the Obama administration. This is going to be a public-private partnership. And the reason why I think this one will be very interesting to follow, for those of you that are interested in this, is that with this public-private partnership, you've got a ton of pension funds in the United States. You've got a lot of government funds, uh, pension pension plans that are underwater. Uh, with interest rates so low for so long, these pension funds are not able to make the kind of returns they need to be able to pay their, their folks that are on these pensions. And so this public-private partnership with the government taking a piece and a role, you're going to see a lot of um, uh, private funding of a lot of this infrastructure for returns, almost like a municipal bond, um, and at very, very low interest rates. So I believe, and Trump's a deal maker. He's a he's a real estate guy. He gets it. He understands it. He understands that when interest rates are very low, and intuitively everybody should understand when interest rates are very low, you want to be borrowing money uh, and using that money to build out assets. And then as interest rates increase, you've already locked in a low rate to build out assets. And then you make value in the incremental increase in the assets. So that's essentially what I believe Trump's going to do. Um, and he's already talked about it, really. And he's got people that um, are lining up for this. So I think this could be a really interesting uh, uh, thing here. And it could be a game changer for the U.S. Now, there are a lot of potential things that can get in the way of this move. One, as I said earlier in kicking off this weekly roundup, the U.S. dollar is on a 10-day win streak right now. Okay. And if we look at the U.S. dollar, let me just get this on my screen here real quick, and I'll show you guys. If you get the U.S. dollar up here, you can see, I mean, we're already over that key 100 level, okay? I mean, we're already, uh, and I'm just going to move it up to the 2016 highs. Uh, on Friday, we made a high price for 2016. We kicked out the 100 level. You can see the open price for the U.S. dollar this year, and I mean, it's just exploded higher. There is no divergences in this. In fact, if we take it out to a weekly chart, just to show you the strength of this dollar, okay, and let's just really back it out here, uh, and we got to go way out in time. Again, this is a weekly chart of the U.S. dollar index. Let me just show you how far back we got to go to just show you where we are right now. Um, we had this key breakout right here. We took out a previous high that was made back in 2015. But now, going way back in time, uh, we haven't seen this going back since 2003. Okay, a huge run-up in the dollar. Now, if, the, if there is a persistent stimulus, and I've talked to my buddies here in Europe, <clears throat> if there is a persistent stimulus across Europe, uh, meaning Draghi is going to continue to um, uh, um, purchase and create a stimulative effect in Europe, which is where the odds favor right now. If he continues that, and they continue with this process in Japan because they just started buying bonds again, uh, they do it in Japan, and China with this stronger dollar is going to be forced to push the value of the yuan lower, lower and lower against the dollar then the U.S. dollar is the only game in town, and you'll see a lot of money come into the dollar, which in turn makes it even stronger, which then, though, is going to start to hurt corporate earnings in the U.S., and it's going to start to affect uh, share price, earnings per share, and things like that. The feds, in turn, are going to have to start hiking rates at a faster rate, which in turn strengthens the U.S. dollar. So it's this cycle here um, if other countries globally are doing stimulus while the U.S. is the only game in town that's going just in the opposite direction, it's going to make for an interesting dynamic. 
And I think we're going to run into a brick wall from a corporate earnings perspective if that happens. Now, let's flip the coin around and let's say we start to see inflationary environments start to take hold uh, in Europe and God forbid in Japan, which they haven't seen in several decades. If that starts to happen, then a strong dollar is going to be okay because now you're going to see the whole global economy start to take off. And then we can see rising interest rates while the U.S. economy continues to, or while equity values continue to drive higher. So, but that's a lot, a lot longer term. For now, uh, let's just let's focus on the next 90 days going into a Trump uh, presidency and then kind of where we go from here. So again, I wanted to point out just where we've been with the U.S. dollar. Now, if we come back and let's take a look at the equities again, or the equity futures, because that's kind of where we want to focus on is the futures, right? So if we look at the equity futures, and let's just come in here first and look at the small cap, uh, which is kind of the proxy here for risk. Um, when money goes into small cap, it's a risk environment. And you can see here, and I keep having to raise this every day. I mean, look at this move here. I mean, off of this low here, we've had just a, a steady drumbeat of higher highs. Uh, and we've made new 2016 highs as we go into close. The Russell uh, was actually up on Friday when we had the Dow Futures that was in the red, the E-minis that were in the red, NASDAQ that was in the red, and money is continuing to come into the small cap and mid cap. You can see the opening price here. We literally went below the opening price. We were in the red on the Russell Futures on the night of the election. And then from there, we've made new highs. We've literally moved from 1123.60 in, excuse me, overnight action all the way up to 1316, right? So you're looking at over almost a 200 point move in the Russell futures. 200 points, guys. That's off of a uh, a 1100 base. I mean, you're looking at like what, 15, 16% in just a couple of weeks, folks. That's that is a reallocation uh, on a turbocharged level. Um, uh, it's just huge, huge movement. So you don't want to be a chaser of this kind of thing because we can see a softening here as price action tends to digest this move. Everybody doesn't want to be the last one to step on the train, right? They want to get a seat. So that's what we're seeing right now. But be careful because we could have a little bit of a softening of price. But I do believe that it's just starting. We could have a very strong 2017 should this take effect. If we do continue to see more of a, uh, of a deflationary or a overstimulus in Europe with Draghi, our Shinzo Abe uh, in, in Japan and in China, then with the U.S. going the other way, we could start to run into some roadblocks. But I wanted to show you these right here. Now, for our members, we've got a list of about 20 stocks, 25 stocks and or ETFs and or commodities uh, that we're looking at just being bullish on, very bullish. And we're continuing to follow these. We've already been making some bets so far, and we got more bets to make. If you're not a member of our group, I highly encourage you to come in because we're off to a great start with the new Trump uh, administration coming in. We're finishing out a nice 2016, and I think 2017 could be even more interesting. We've had a big fall in volatility. If we look at the VIX, let me just get the VIX up here. You can see this big movement to the downside in the VIX. I mean, we were literally on election night, uh, pre and uh, during election night, we've moved up into the 22 handle and then boom, we're all the way back down again, sub 13, okay? So just a, just a lot of premium was sucked out of the market in a very short period of time as money is starting to make their bets um, right now. Uh, and of course, no place has moved out faster than in the uh, uh, U.S. Treasuries. And if we look at the 30-year bond, I mean, look at this. This is, now this is a daily chart. This isn't a five-minute chart. We've fallen off the table. We've now come into my first area of, of a support area. Now, we've been playing the bond to the downside, and there have been a number of ways that we've been playing it. We've, we've tended to favor TBT to the upside, 
but we're also looking at the bond to the downside and TLT to the downside. Uh, and you can see we've we've clearly broken the 200 EMA. We tested it back here in September. We tried to make an attempt to get back up above the 50 EMA, which is this red line, and we didn't do it. We broke it, and now you see the death cross right here of both the 50 and the 200. So I think the dynamics of the bond market have changed. Um, and if we look at this upslope and trend line right here, I've got two of them on the chart here, and I just want to go way back in time so I can I can capture this and show you just how far back um, these lines go here. Okay, uh, and I'm you know probably be better if I showed it weekly, wouldn't it? But you know, you guys get the idea. You can see going all the way back to 2007, this lower upslope and trend line, and this is a valid trend line because we touched it. This is a weekly chart. I'm sorry, a daily chart, but we touched it uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost nine times this upslope and trend line here. And then this steeper slope, it's got a higher vector to the upside. You know, kind of that's where we kind of catapulted from 2014 up and made new all time highs in the bond market. And then we're just giving it up on the back end side because nothing goes up at that rate forever. Um, but then again, nothing falls at this rate forever either. So you got to understand there's two sides to this coin. Um, I do believe we're going to find some support here, a little bit of a respite. And then should Trump do what he says and Yellen is forced to have a higher trajectory or a higher glide path for interest rates next year, the dollar is going to continue to get stronger. Bonds are going to continue to sell off. And we'll come and touch this lower, lower upsloping trend line right here. Um, and <clears throat> so that is where we're in store for, for the bond market. So there's a lot of opportunities there as money comes out of the bond market and into equities. And if we look at this on a weekly basis, I mean, we've been in, uh, if you look at this, just look at this, this bull market we've been in in bonds. And folks, this goes back a long time right here. Um, and if I were to just take all indicators off the, off the screen here. You can see here, uh, going all the way back to 1981, we've been in this, this move to the upside. And I think it's going to give up a lot of this. All right. Do I think it's going to give up half? No, I don't. But I do believe that we're going to be coming back down to the 930 area, uh, probably the 927 area. And it may take through 2017 to get into there, maybe 2018. But keep in mind, we've been moving very fast. And, and you can see on the back side of this movement here just how ugly it's been on this weekly chart right here. Okay, I mean, it's just, uh, it, it's just moved down dramatically. There is a lot of buyers down here in the 133 area. And you can see these pockets of buyers that have kind of stepped in, or sellers uh, for that matter. And I do believe that we're going to continue this track down. It's going to rest a little bit. We're going to have pockets of uh, counter trend moves, but that's kind of what we're looking at. And if we look at the euro, the euro on this weekly chart, let me just put all the indicators back on the, on this, on the chart for you. Uh, we're coming down here and we have made, let me put it on a daily, we've made new lows for 2016, just like we've made new highs in the dollar. Here is the euro. We made a new low here at 105. Uh, roughly the 105 euro. Now, I like this because I'm over in Europe right now, so obviously my dollar goes a lot stronger than it did when I first got over here. Um, and it's just amazing. There is no bullish divergence in this at all. This suggests this thing could come down to parity. Um, and you can see my first area right here, we hit perfectly. Um, and now we're just forming a perfect Elliott wave um, count that could take us down. And my I'm looking at a possible move, uh, Elliott wave wise. Let me come. Let me put it back on a, a weekly chart here, so it'll show up a little bit better. You're seeing here an Elliott wave move of uh, possibly sub parity, right, um, down to the 97, 98 area. I mean, that's just folks. That's a huge move. Okay. Um, so, and we haven't been down here since the inception of the euro. I was over in Europe when the euro first came out. And a lot of people don't realize the euro was down in the high 80, 88, 89, 90 cents to the US dollar. Uh, and then the euro started its large trek up. 
So that's kind of where we're sitting here in the currency market. A lot of opportunities. Um, I haven't even talked about the pound. Um, there is um, in the in the British pound. Let me put it back on the daily chart here. There is opportunities in the pound. I do believe the pound and Britain is going to surprise everybody. Okay, it, there's going to be a lot of fits and stops and starts to the British pound. But I do believe in two or three years, the pound is going to be higher than where we're sitting right now. And there's going to be some opportunities to play that. And then if we look at the yen, uh, the yen has fallen off the table. We're coming down to a key support area here. Um, and again, due to the stronger uh, dollar in the U.S. economy, we're seeing all these other currencies. Money is just coming out. And this is very conducive to exporters in Japan, which, of course, is very conducive to the Nikkei. The Nikkei generally moves in the opposite direction of the, the yen. And we're seeing money flow into the Nikkei. I mean, it's just amazing where it's gone. I mean, if we look at the Nikkei, um, let me just find it over here. Here we go. Uh, we're at um, highs. Uh, for the Nikkei. You can see right here, we're coming back up to the 2016 high for the Nikkei. Uh, and this is a daily chart. So you can see how we're off these these lows here. So a very weak, this is the daily chart of the Nikkei. And this was the open price here for 2016. And we've spent the rest of the year. Um, the open price also happened to be the high price for the Nikkei for this year. But you're seeing we're working our way back up, and there's no reason for me to believe we're not going to be able to uh, take this out. Now, will we be able to make a new 2016 high before the end of the year? That remains to be seen. Um, but it looks like we're making that path right now. Um, and then, of course, if we come down and take a look, as I mentioned, to the um, uh, um, metals, we look at gold. Uh, gold is coming down and hitting this level that I've talked about over and over, which is around the 1200 area. I thought we were going to get a little bit more of a bounce to the upside, but we didn't. Um, and so we're just following this path down. We're coming down to my support area, which I called the 1200. But gold could go even lower if we have the kind of year I think we're going to have next year. Um, it's not going to be a, a true inflationary environment, not if the rest of the planet is basically stagnant. Um, or the, uh, so we could see gold go even lower as interest rates climb here as a stronger dollar, which is more conducive to a weak, uh, weaker gold in this particular environment. So uh, I think gold can maybe get a little bit of a counter trend, but we're going to be more sellers of gold than, than buyers. And in the oil market, well, oil is going to be big dependent on um, uh, OPEC and their meeting coming up. You can see we've had this move higher going into an anticipation of OPEC being able to all come together like herding cats uh, and, and come up with a plan to cut. I don't believe it, um, but here we are. You can see this, the pivot high and pivot low here. Uh, and I've got a, a, an Elliott wave extension off the lows, and we're sitting trapped just, belief, just beneath this 38% extension off this pivot low here. So do I think we'll be able to make it? I don't know. Right now, my charts are suggesting that we'll kind of stay here, and then OPEC, if they fail to deliver, uh, oil is going to come back down and test this 39.19 area, which was a previous pivot low right here. If we take this out, 42.29, Folks, we're going down. We're going to go down sub 40. So that's a little bit about where I'm looking at on the energy market uh, right now. Now, we've got other trades that are going in the agricultural market, the meats market. We just placed a trade in meats. Uh, and then in the soft market, um, we're watching. Uh, we've, been, we've made money in orange juice to the downside. Uh, it looks like it's in a counter move right now. I'd like to see it move up a little bit higher, and then we'll be interested an ideal scenario for me would be to make new 2016 highs in OJ, and then I'll short the hell out of it. Um, but if not any rollover, I'm going to be willing, more willing to short than go long. All right, everybody, that is a quick overview of the markets. Again, if you're not a member, um, I highly encourage you to come in. We're finishing out a nice year, 2016. Uh, we're going to be kicking off 2017 here. And gosh, holidays, New Year's, it's only, what, six weeks, seven weeks away. It's really crazy, pretty quick. 
Um, but otherwise, members, I will see you this Sunday night for our weekly uh, market watch for the upcoming trading week. Everybody else, I will see you on another free weekly roundup the following weekend. Have a great weekend, everybody, and I will see everybody at Late Tour. Bye. Ciao.